Hello there, I'm Big Alias, and it's that time of the decade again. It's that once in a decade time where I get to tell you about good Halo news. Happy go luck. Well, okay. Cautiously good Halo news. Big Halo news. Huge Halo news, in fact. And uh, let me let me tell you, I'm used to big things. And this, oh, it's a whopper. This is Halo. <laughs> I don't know what I meant by that. This is Halo. Halo news from the championship. And they have done some big things. Or rather, they're going to do some big things. And they've done some big things too. So <laughs> let's stop beating around the bush and let's talk about it. 343 is done. Dun, 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 dun. Dead. Dead as a doornail. Uh, they're done. Oh, 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 to an extent. So they've changed their name. They're now Halo Studios. Um, which is a surprise to probably a few, honestly, but it, it seems like the right thing to do. Um, I will say that it's a bit of a weird situation because, yes, you could call it a new studio because the, the studio has changed so much. So many people have left, shifted around, moved around um, that you could you could call this a new studio. And, you know, with the new rebrand, uh, we could say that Halo Studio is not or studios are not. 343 Industries. Um, they are also switching to Unreal Engine 5. That's the big one for me. They are switching. Split, <laughs> slip space, slip space is done. You can go ahead and throw half a billion dollars into the ocean. <laughs> slip space is over. And again, I, I, I do think this is the right thing to do. They're on UE5 now. They've been working on it for a couple of years now. Uh, a couple of years. And on top of all of that, they actually have more than one game in development currently and on top of that they're expanding their studios so if you want an answer to the question of why did they go free to play with microtransactions for halo multiplayer i, I don't get it there's your answer homie that's why because they're now able to expand their offices and make multiple games at once i think this is the first time in halo history that they've been working on multiple games at once i think with reach and odst uh they split into two in order to produce those games when it came to the rts's i think that was certain affinity who made those it wasn't uh bungee so this is yeah it's a big deal <clears throat> the fact that they're able to do that now a lot of people are saying you know the general consensus honestly uh in the comments is guys you know practice cautious cautious optimism please don't you know we do, we fell for this before with infinite we all got excited about infinite i know i did we got very excited about hello infinite and uh they're gonna do the same to us again you know just, just be careful and I can see why people would think that. This trailer is actually very similar to the one that we got for Infinite, though a lot more impressive. I, th I think this looks a lot more impressive. This is actually very similar to Halo Infinite uh, reveal in 2018, but there are a few very important caveats to remember. Now, I, I will say, do practice cautious op optimism. Do be cautious about this because I haven't shown any gameplay yet. And, and we, honestly, be cautious until you get the game. You don't know. You don't know what the game's gonna be like. I will always say that, be cautious. But I don't think this is going to be a repeat of Halo Infinite. I mean, firstly, the big issue with Infinite was not with the art style, which, let's be honest, is what's on Showcase here. It, I think people universally liked the art style. I, I know I loved it. Um, it was a lack of content and a very poor live service model. And that has, you know, nothing to do with the reveal. And uh, we're not really in that state currently with Halo Infinite. I mean, what, something happened where a bunch of higher ups left and then coincidentally, and I I'm sure it is just pure coincidence. Um, all of the content sort of started spilling out and the game, the game actually became quite feature rich and quite content rich. And that just coincidentally happened after all of the higher ups left. It's just a pure coincidence, a, 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 a real coincidence that the higher ups left and suddenly we got a bunch of content. A pure coincidence. Also, do remember this is uh this is ue5 this is not they're not building an engine there's a big over like overarching sentiment a motif through all of this you know through the the, the vidoc and even the interview after uh where they where they said several times like we, we don't have to be a tech company anymore we can just be game developers and we're really excited about that um clearly slip space was an issue for them you know clearly that was getting in their way of of getting things done this is UE5, dude. <laughs> People make games on UE5 in their bedroom. If 
if Halo Studios, as they're now called, cock this one up, then yeah, we can definitely start blaming them. People, people will just sit in their bedroom and remake Super Mario, was it 64, on UE5. If they can't make uh, a game on UE5 here, then uh, I don't know what to tell you, man. And, and like I said, they're expanding their offices. And um, from what I've heard, and I, I don't know where people got the source for this, so this is a completely firing from the hip. Apparently, um, Microsoft are going to be relying less on short-term contracts. On an engine, short-term contracts on an engine that no one else has used. How, how bizarre was that? Um, which is great, you know that that that's good. Plus, uh, it's a bit of a, a bit of a side note, but I mean, if they're using UE five, and I've heard that they're going to be getting help from some uh, Epic devs. Uh, you know, Epic Games are the biggest developers in the world right now. Um, you've probably heard of them. And plus, to be honest, they're using UE five for Fortnite, and they're able to constantly update that thing. So I just think it's a, a far more versatile engine for them to work with. So I won't worry about that. You know, um, uh, as much. I, I just think I don't think it's the same situation. I think it's easy to get caught up in the notion that what we're looking at is the same. But the issues that Infinite faced are not currently currently issues that the team should be facing. Uh, I mean, from what I can tell, what we've seen here is an engine. I, I'm sorry, but I don't think the Infinite reveal. I th I'm not sure whether they said it was an engine, but I really. That did not feel like the game that we played. The level of detail that we got in that trailer was not the game that we we subsequently got. But I just don't think it was an engine. I think it was just a, a, a rendered cutscene. This is an engine. They're tooling with UE5. What they've made, what they're showing, from what they've told us, is from the engine. We've seen them making it in engine in the Vidoc. I just... I would have a little bit more trust in the team here. And plus, they've said, you know, it, we're, we're, you'll get it when it's ready, which means we'll get it probably in about five years' time because they take forever making games nowadays. Um, so that kind of sucks. But at the same time, you know, as long as it's good. And, and I'm enjoying Infinite. And that's another thing. I mean, overall, you know, we're all sort of pretending that Infinite's a bad game. But in its current state, Infinite ended tremendously well. It's it's a, actually a fantastic game now. Um, so I have all faith in this team because the fantastic game that we have now is because of the team that we have now. And that new guy, Pierre, I think his name is, who, who was like, dude, I'm a developer. I don't want to be on camera. Like, I, I love that energy. I love that energy. An introverted game dev. Let's go. So... Am I excited? Uh, like everyone else, I'm cautiously optimistic. This is great news. What do I think of the way it looks? I think graphically it looks fantastic. This is how I would want Halo to look now. I love the emphasis on uh, more foliage. That seemed to be something that was lacking in Infinite was, uh, you know, foliage, which is a shame, really, because Halo 3 was, you know, uh, very much praised for that. Uh, yeah, there's grass everywhere. And I love the lighting and the color palette and the fact that it, that it reeks of Halo, but, you know, in the modern age, which they kind of did with Infinite, um, but it just looks even better here. And, and one thing I forgot to mention, they've been toying around with flood biomes. Uh, this is a game that seems to be a, an apology to the fact or how many times have I heard that? Um, and if it is, I can see Flood coming back, dude. I can. Why would they be tooling with it if they were not going to bring the Flood back? Fingers crossed. Here's hoping. I'm being a bit too optimistic here. But yeah, I am cautiously optimistic. I'm happy with it. I think it makes total sense to switch to UE5. And I think it makes complete sense to change their name. The name is tarnished. You know, um, it's it's not a good name in gaming. Especially when Moist Critical makes a video with several million views saying that you're the worst developers on the planet. You're going to have to switch your name up. Uh, so they did the right thing there. But yeah, I'm cautiously optimistic. Uh, from, what, from what I've seen, things could be great. Or they could suck, but, I mean, isn't that how everything works? <laughs> Alright, I'll see everyone later. The PlayStation is only $149, and you can also get leading titles.